Welcome, dear viewers, to a new episode of Dialogue Horizon. In this very special and very important Dialogue Horizon, we will cover in depth the most important event, recent event of the signing of the peace agreements with, with the warring factions, not all of them, of course, but the uh, majority of them, and it was really a historic event. Um, it met commendation from different parts of the country, different people of the country, and different, uh, even in the international community, including the Secretary General of the United uh, Nations. So we are really happy to have in this episode Professor Selemana Dibello, the chairman of the Peace Commission, who conducted this process, this painstaking process for quite a long time in a very low profile until it surfaced out in this important event last week or this week in, in Juba. Also, we are also glad to have in this uh, dialogue uh, Hala Yasin Al Karib. Hala Yasin Al Karib is a regional director of an NGO, a very important NGO, is called SIHA, the Strategic Initiative for Women in the Horn of Africa. So first we are proud to have a Sudanese uh, uh, lady on top of this important mm -hmm. uh, organization, NGO. Uh, definitely the piece is related to the coded and the terms of this, uh, she will tell us, she will tell us later, and Ibi will tell us more about the peace itself and its, its importance in the, to, to, to the women and to their initiative of improving the women's uh, role in, in the underdeveloped countries. So we will start first, definitely we will start with uh, by uh, saying congratulations to Professor Sereman Di Bello, Chairman of the Peace Commission. Sudanese Peace Commission, would like uh, Professor Suleiman to tell us first about this, after 10 years of painstaking and uh, difficult days and months of negotiations between the warring factions, different factions, and uh, creation of five tracks and all this, this is now it's a good history because it culminated to uh, this event of the, uh, can you tell us about this process, how it started, how it ended, and why it is in the initials, the signature, what's the difference, what's the meaning of signing. Many people, they want to know the difference between full ratification of signing and signing in initials. Thank you, Indian Omar. Uh, glad to be with you today. And thank you for your listeners and viewers. Uh, I'm glad also to be with Ms. Hala. Uh, in this dialogue, uh, the peace process that has been culminated now last uh, on the 29th of this month, uh, signed in Juba, has started very late uh, at, on the 11th of September, this past September, 2019, by the Juba Declaration. In that declaration, uh, it has been signed between the Sudanese government and the Revolutionary France uh, collective armed groups and some political parties with them. Total, in total, there were around nine uh, constitu constituency of the Revolutionary Front. And then it continues from the uh, September 11 till the 29th, which is almost 10 months. And during this process, many, many uh, protocols and many agreement has been signed, but uh, the uh, last signatures uh, were done for around 10, 11 protocols, and those protocols are one of them. The uh, is not in order, but the one of them is a final peace agreement with SPLM North, Agar, around about the two areas and signed by the mediation, the government, and uh, Agar SPLM North. Also, in this final peace agreement, I think there are crucial 
issues that has been settled in it, uh, power and authority, and then the structure and power of the government in the two areas, and uh, there will be a governor in Blue Nile, deputy governor in Southern Kurdufan, deputy governor in Western Kurdufan. They will have 30 percent in the state legislative council uh, in both Southern Kurdufan, Western Kurdufan, and Blue Nile. The women there will be represented by 40 percent in the legislative council. And then regarding the civil service, uh, positive discrimination, they will have 5 percent in Southern Kurdufan, 3.2 in Blue Nile, 4.3 in Western Kurdufan, 40 percent share in the wealth. That's you know, the three, uh, the two areas, including Western Kurdufan. The status of Western Kurdufan will be determined after uh, the governance system uh, conference, which will be held six months after the signature of the <coughs> of the agreement. Uh, the two area governance, the parties. This is a crucial point, which is uh, the. Uh, it has been. Uh, excessively discussed in the media, which is regarding the self-determination uh, or uh, no, 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 uh, autonomy. The, the autonomy. And the exact text of the article, the parties agreed without prejudice to the unity of Sudan. Unity of Sudan, that's very important. Very important. And uh, Sudan people and land. That means that you cannot talk about separation or anything like that. Uh, the exclusive and joint or remaining authorities stipulated in the agreement, the two regions enjoy autonomy in which the power stipulated in this agreement are exercised. So actually it's an arrangement for how to govern the two uh, areas rather than uh, autonomy or anything of that, uh, that. So the autonomy is going for how to manage the state. It is not definitely autonomy, autonomy in the sense of it might lead, because many people say it might lead to separation in the future, just like what happened to Southern Sudan. Uh, on the national issue so also. So actually, let me interrupt. Yeah. Actually, what will be the difference in these two, uh, two, two, two uh, states which were granted this uh, self-autonomy or whatever you call it? What are the, are there any loopholes that these two might Secede, like South? No, no, no. What I, are the guarantees? Yes. Well, the, want to know the guarantees are very clear as it's stipulated here. It is the parties without regard to the unity of Sudan. So the, I'm not yes. going to talk about. Unity of Sudan. Yes. So it's complete out of question, to uh, to question of separation yes. or yes. separation. Yes. Uh, that's very, very, yes. very that's, clear. That's the thing. Okay. And so there are so, so many other issues uh, discussed also, the national issues, for example. That's the second protocol, which is the various one is the. Is the the, what do you call it, uh, the peace agreement, the final peace agreement with the Western Kurdufan, but the second protocol is the national issue. And that, it, it covers all the issues which are not, you see, the way the peace process this, this time is structured is that in each area, that's why we are calling about, uh, people were talking about, uh, there are so many uh, venues, so many uh, uh, tracks, uh, tracks mm -hmm. ongoing, and this is going to. Be, but actually, this peace process is completely different than the previous peace processes, because it includes all the issues of the of the countries. In each state, they have different issues. For example, in the east, eastern state, the three eastern states they have specific uh, issues. In the north, they have specific issues. In Darfur, they have and the two areas. So, after discussing all this. Uh, issues in each region, then there are some national issues left for to be this. So there is a specific protocol for the national issues, which include transitional period, for example, that that's covered the whole country, uh, transitional period duration. And it's agreed that it's going to be 39 months after the signature of okay. the agreement. Okay, Professor. Now, people, they signed, they signed, they said, does this mean that the initials, only initials, okay. does this mean that there is another okay. another uh, celebration for the final time? Yes, there will okay. be some, but you see, the, this agree, the agreement that has been initialed already, that's actually the final agreement. Actually the final agreement. Yes, but what is left now, this agreement has so many uh, issues in to be implemented. Uh -huh. So we are going to take like two to three weeks 
to pull out a matrix. Okay. That time, matrix, time, that time matrix, yes, okay. the time frame, the schedule for how to execute the execution frame. Mm -hmm. So that one will be established within this two to three weeks, and that, and then we'll that out. matrix will be part of this protocol, and they all together they will be the final peace agreement. The final sign. So the signature in this one, it is not going to be the signature for each protocol, but it's going to be a generalized signature for the whole peace agreement. Okay, Prophet, it's very good, but okay, let us let us let yeah. us see let us see Hala. She has definitely in her initiative. SIA, SIA is the strategic initiative mm -hmm. for women in the Horn of Africa, which Horn of Africa is, uh, Sudan is part and part of right. the fourth. What does that mean? What does peace mean to you and to your organization and to, to you mm -hmm. uh, uh, following the, 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 the mm -hmm. objectives and the terms of the mm -hmm. uh, organization mm -hmm. which, in which you are the regional director? Thank you very much. Um, and I, I'd like to thank um, uh, Dr. Suleiman for the, you know, um, explanation of the political process um, about uh, and the steps that was taken um, to achieve this critical uh, step uh, at this point of time. And thank you for question about what does peace mean. And I think the question is also extended to the fact that what does peace mean not only for, for us, you know, as, as women activists, but it's, what does peace mean for Sudanese people? And, um, um, you know, I, I keep saying this all the time, that we are the country with the uh, uh, highest number of peace agreements in Africa. And we are the country with the highest failures of achieving peace in Africa, which is uh, we really hope that there is a lot of lesson learned from the past. And uh, Dr. Suleiman, he spoke about the, you know, the several tracks of peace, and, and this is significant, um, addressing the specificity of each region. But um, um, I think the expansion of the concept of peace is very critical for Sudan. I mean, uh, how, uh, w like, peace does not mean, you know, um, um, you know um, uh, a group of, uh, of men who are carrying guns sitting together and signing a paper. Peace, it means social peace. It means inclusivity of all actors. It means uh, those who have been affected for decades for their voices to be heard. And those who are also working you know, tirelessly to achieve peace, um, they also should be observed and seen in the process. And um, 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 as I said, I think it's a, it's a significant step, but I also think that there is a lot of uh, missing pieces in the puzzles. And, uh, um, and I think that unless those pieces are put together, including addressing the root causes of conflict and why we initially found ourselves in this situation, um, uh, we will struggle as a nation continuously with the fact that you know uh, um, the triggering factors will be there, and we might wake up uh, next morning and find another faction, um, uh, which is right now it's happening as well. You know this is not everyone um, that should be there is there um, at this point of time. So 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 peace is really a very very comprehensive concept. Um, and uh, it's, it, it should be approached from that angle. But that does not undermine the significance of bringing um, um, you know, those uh, uh, armed movements who has been um, outside of the, uh, of the governance framework in Sudan, especially after the Sudan Revolution for years and years, bring them back home and start you know, challenging and speaking about our, our problems you know, peacefully. Very good, very good, uh, Hala. Thank you, uh, yes, we can, you can add, yes. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, Hala, uh, I think in order to be able to dig the, do, uh, the, 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 the root cause of the problem of Sudan, first of all, we need all of us to be sitting in one platform. And I think that's what we are now working on. First of all, uh, we have now a collection of armed groups, mm -hmm. uh, which has been creating a kind of instability and a peace hazard to the country and exhausted, actually exhausted the 
and it's contributed substantially to the damage to the economy of the country. Aside from, uh, let us assume, uh, forget about the corruption that has been ongoing. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, so I think the implementation process, which is the next space, mm -hmm. that's the crucial part where you have to include everybody, where you have to, it has to be inclusive, you, women, youth, uh, refugees, uh, IDBs, people in the peripheries, and all these things, their issues has been addressed in these agreements, in a way or another. All these issues has been really addressed in this uh, uh, agreement. However, uh, the main crucial part will be, as you said, we signed so many agreements in the past, and we failed. But this agreement, I think, is slightly different than the previous agreement, because those ones are poli politically motivated. This one is actually interest-driven, because from all parties mm -hmm. are their interest is to reach peace. And in fact, it's one uh, the first item in the constitutional documents that peace has to be sustained first, and then after that, we can start working. And for that reason, I'm, I do believe that what we reach now will assist all of us to, be, to work together to reach, to resolve, to dissolve, and to erode uh, the root cause of the problem. That's, that's um, very good. Okay, we continue on the issue of the map to receive the time frame, which will complete the agreements yes. and then yes. another event will be. Yes. Do you anticipate any difficulties when you come to the details? No, no, no. no. Uh, you see, uh, the text is in Arabic of all these protocols. Mm. What will happen is uh, the party to the signatories, so the signatories of this thing and the uh, the secretary will be sitting down and try to just switch out a matrix and specify because everything is specified in the, in the documents. The in, each, in Arabic? In, yes. In each protocol, mm. we have dates and we have the people who are responsible to execute that. So it's an execution process uh, and it shouldn't take that much time. And there is no room for negotiation. It's done. Already uh, done. Everybody is agreed upon uh, what's written and what we are going to do is just to spread it around into a matrix, uh, we call it, a, which will be an implementation type matrix. Okay. Is that, so, the, so again, we'll have... So you don't we'll have any difficulties when you come no, to the details no. of the no. matrix and the timing and... Okay. It's, it is already agreed upon. I, I will okay. come again to a very important question, but before that we go to Hara. Hara, what do you expect from the mm -hmm. piece? You said very mm -hmm. nice words mm -hmm. about Sudan, the history of Sudan being mm -hmm. setting records. Mm -hmm number of peace agreements and number of failure of uh, peace. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is very, very good. I like it. Mm -hmm. But tell us about what do you expect mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. these people, our professor and his crew, mm -hmm. you, because you are really, really much, very much concerned about the peace in Sudan mm -hmm. and in particular the peace in Sudan for mm -hmm. women to be more productive and more acting, uh, having a more important mm -hmm. role Mm -hmm. in, in, in the mm -hmm. you mentioned that in one uh, in the mm -hmm. detail that they agreed to 40% uh, for women only 40% mm -hmm. mm -hmm. is, is it okay well can you elaborate on this uh, the, the, the effect of this on you right. on the women and on the right. initiative well initially i'd like to say that minimizing you know uh, the challenges that women are facing into representations it's uh, it's something that's it's not acceptable women are citizens of sudan they are over 50 percent of the country populations and they are uh, part like critical part of the driving force of the economy of this country and they are, um, you know, they are the breadwinners. They are uh, sharing, putting food on the tables with their, uh, with their male counterparts and so on. So, uh, so minimizing the struggle and what women are going through into the representation, it's, it's, I don't think it's a right approach. I think um, uh, women, they are the fairest beneficiary of justice. Um, they are the fairest beneficiary of equal citizenship rights. They are the fairest beneficiary, and we aspire critical changes on the legal and policy framework. And this takes me to the whole question of, you know, uh, as I said earlier, the fact that it's not about signing or ratifying or a tick or ticking um, a box. You know, it's about um, a peace agreement that does not have teeth. And I mean a beef agreement that doesn't, is not connected or linked to a system of governance 
that endorses peace through policies, through laws, and through effective legislation that changes the realities and addressing the grievances that lead to peace, we will go back again into the same cycles of conflicts. And this is our biggest worries. And women are central in this. It was proven, uh, like now and again, that a country that does not you know, provide for half of its population, it's doomed to become um, you know, uh, uh, sort of uh, suffering and struggling with cycles of armed conflicts. We have seen this across the region. We have seen this in Africa. And, and it's not only women, but it's also um, other Sudanese um, nations and people. We need really every one of us, everyone in Sudan, need to have a strong sense of ownership of this country and not to feel that, you know, um, when they get so frustrated that they should defect and, and start an armed movement. And this comes from a system of governance. So in my view, that a peace agreement should be directly connected with, uh, you know, a system of governance that serve the peace and endorse it, you know, and contribute to the, st to the sustainability of the peace. Uh, uh, Professor Tiran, I think you have yeah. a, lo a lot of to, to comment on that. <laughs> the, the governor, yes, she said very yeah. smart, a smart no, no. point that to, to, to link the peace agreement with the system of governance. Yes, he yeah, actually is linked. And in, in a way, uh, at this stage, the, the whole peace process is, is the sole part of the, the government. And we are talking about uh, the Prime Minister and his cabinet, the laws that has been going to be established, we are talking about the Commission and the laws and it's the way it's going to be integrated. Everybody will find himself in it. Uh, I mean, here the problem is we are not talking about uh, a well-established system of government. We are established, we are talking about a uh, period with a specific task and that task a crucial part of that task is the peace, uh, reaching peace. Once we reach peace, and hopefully there will come the democracy day later on, then during that process, I think, uh, hopefully this peace agreement will lay the footage and the good ground for the future of the country. And I think by integrating all these people who are now fighting in the, yes, it is not a complete uh, peace agreement is still yet we have to address uh, Abdelaziz al Hero, Abdul Wahid, not only that, there are some other uh, groups which are not included in uh, Juba. However, all these things we are destined to address their needs. Uh, with Abdelaziz, I think there is a uh, process started, although it is, we started with him uh, nine, nine months ago, we couldn't reach something. Now, uh, yes. Yesterday, I think the Prime Minister has signed an agreement, I don't know, uh, a declaration of principles, uh, although this declaration of principles, which has been uh, discussed uh, in early as early as, I think, Octo no, past October, the same, uh, but same issue. The same, the same piece of paper, uh, which has been signed by Prime Minister Hamdouk, I think it has been on the table during that period of time. So, in general, and, uh, uh, what I believe, Hala, uh, yes, regarding the issue of women, I don't really, I'm not going to discuss anything more, but what I'm saying is that this is the agreement, and the agreement, the people, the signatories to this agreement, ex agreed on 40% representation for women. That's, that's the situation now. Uh, but let me just reflect on this a little bit. Uh, we have been in the United States uh, in 1960. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> During that period of time, I had a chat. 70, 70. I had a chat with uh, a group of colleagues from the colleges in Wisconsin, and we were talking about the women. Uh, some of them were very excited about women. I told them that we have a prime minister at that time. We have uh, not a prime minister. We have we have a parliamentary. Uh, a parliamentary yeah. we have, uh, yeah. And we have a minister, also minister of health, I think, at that time. Yeah. During that time. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the American were really, the girls there were really yeah. surprised that you guys are much better than us. Even today, in the, in the biggest country, of the w richest country of the world, women have a problem. And I think we in Sudan, 
we have a better uh, better yes, mm -hmm. situation yeah, than we have. Yes, yep. and we, uh, our will, we are not going to manage the <laughs> this is a dispute. I'm issue. absolutely in, in, and this is what I said yeah. earlier that we shouldn't minimize no. women in Sudan challenges into the issue of political uh, representation. No, 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 no. But I am in agreement with you yeah. that definitely in the 1960s, yeah. we were much better. Yes. We retreated into a True. very dark point. True. You know, today, women have been beaten up sometimes to death without having any legal protection. You know, I am dealing often with women who were like cut, raped, violated, you know, harassed systematically, and they cannot put a foot in any police station and find protection. You know, so the truth of the matter, you know, we were definitely better. We used to have, um, you know, we used to have Sharia judge in Sudan in the 1970s you know we not only civil judges we had many yes. civil judges but we used to have three sharia judges which it never happened in any of the middle eastern or any muslim countries around the world and they were appointed by a very enlightened you know uh, uh maulana jizuli who was uh, the high uh, sharia court judge you know, so we were good and we still need to remember that i am just so frustrated with the fact that you know we are the one who in inspired the United Nations, you know, and inspired the CEDU, the Convention of Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination, to come to light in the 1970s. It's the work of the Sudanese women in the 60s, yet, you know, we are one of three countries in the world who is still up to date, refuse and, 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 and sort of reluctant to ratify and sign CEDU. It's Sudan and Somalia and Iran. Only so you can see, you know, where we stand when it comes yeah. to issues of women's yeah. rights. You know, so the, the yeah. duration, the, the process, had, had how we read this situation, you know that. But I think now there is an opportunity. Everybody in this country now is going back to uh, revive mm -hmm. the country, pull it back into the norm that's supposed to be at. But frankly speaking, we cannot judge during the, uh, this part, maybe 30 years or so, we cannot just judge the country with the, the, the deeds that has been done through that. No, no, absolutely. But and and Sudanese people, they but, prove that. But you now, know? The they prove that they are way ahead. Yes, but now, yeah. as I think, yes. there is way a drastic ahead, change. Yes. There is a drastic change. There is an insistence from the government that women has to be uh, ministers. Women, ha women has to be in the houses. But and and and, it's on the and it's still not to ratify all the core documents that enable women you know, to participate don't, fully. Don't, don't rush things. Yeah, that's we so just uh, started. So the, the, the start of the piece. We just started. It will be just a good turn for a launching pad for uh, for, for uh, achieving yes. more. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, Professor Suleiman, you mentioned something about Al Hilu. Yes. And you said that the paper which was signed yeah. uh, in Addis with the Prime Minister, yes. uh, already, already this paper was not new to you. Yeah, yeah. You know it and you know yes. when they saw it was signed. Yes. What does this mean? The Prime Minister signed on behalf of the, the Peace country. Commission, on behalf of what, what, what yeah. is effect? This signature this is a very important question because people yeah. want to know what is the, well, what is the importance of an important effect of the signature of Prime Minister Hamdouk with Commander Abdelaziz Hilo on this um, issue. Of, of course, this is. Of course, now that uh, declaration is becoming now official because signed by the higher, the Prime Minister of the country and signed by the Chairman of the SPLM North, Malik uh, Abdelaziz Hilo. Uh, what comes next is the negotiation. You have to sit on the negotiation table. And you see, the problem with this uh, declaration, it has only two options regarding the, the either secession of, yeah. this, uh, sorry, secession, secession or, or uh, secularism. So there is no alternative. Previously, people were saying, uh, or at least putting on the table, uh, citizenship, the country of citizenship where everybody is equal, where everybody has uh, free to experience his religion, belief, all, all these things. But now I think it's, that's why it has been rejected all through this 
duration of this period of time uh, through the negotiation. Rejected by, by the government? Uh, by the negotiator, yes, the government, the negotiating part of the okay, government. Okay, the government. But, uh, or the government in general. But now it's becoming now official and uh, we have to go either way. Either uh, we accept the, the one of the two options available. So to you as chairman of this commission, this portal commission, and now district nature, I think it's historic, which was done yesterday in Addis Ababa between the two, to what, what will be the steps? How yes. can you integrate it in the, in the peace, the whole peace progress? Pro no. process? But you see now, a new, because this is just a starting, by the way, it's a frame of how to negotiate with Abdul Aziz. It's a starter, uh, this declaration. And I assume uh, the Prime Minister has now to establish a team for negotiation with Abdul Aziz, because he cannot continue negotiating with him personally. Mm -hmm. So he has to establish a team to negotiate with Abdul Aziz so that he can reach a conclusion for this. This is not only this is not the only issue. This is just the starting point of negotiation. This declaration. The, the starting and point. Yes. There are so many issues. The same issues that has been discussed here is going to be discussed again with Abdul Aziz. Do you think Abdul Aziz has other issues? Other than, of, of, uh, you, let us assume that uh, it is resolved. I was, what 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 was signed in Juba last week by all these warring factions? Do you think that after resolving this conflict between secularism and cessation? Does Abdel Aziz has, have, uh, he still he has something more? Well, of than course. What was discussed in Juba in the last 10, 10 months? Of course. If, if I'm not negotiating with you and somebody will negotiate an agreement, somehow I will have to find a place where I can inject. <laughs> you have to put some weight. Of course. I mean, you cannot just come and stamp. At least you put wherever. a comma or something. But, but frankly speaking, I think what has been reached with the past group covers by and large most of the issues that every politician can think of and you see th my problem about this whole process is not the agreement itself my problem is the implementation of the agreement that's why i'm really concerned and worried because yeah. the agreement is comprehensive in a way and with an open mind anybody will find himself within that agreement with an open mind mm. uh, the implement implementation then will be the crucial issue in the coming uh, two, three, four, five, ten, maybe ten years, because it can expand up to that duration of time. And you see, again, the peace itself uh, is, is not just a document. You know, uh, you know uh, we are a country uh, surrounded by many uh, countries we have refugees in practically in most of these countries. We have in Chad, in Central Africa, Niger, Uganda, South Sudan, Ethiopia, Egypt. All this, uh, we have people there and thank for them. We will have to thank them because they have been sh providing shelter for our people who have spread the world. In the sea. We have also the IDBs inside Sudan. In fact, even around Khartoum areas, there are not many IDBs. In order that the execution comes here, I mean, you have to resolve the issues of these people, refugees, IDBs. Uh, again, you have to be very careful politically again with your neighbor because if you, if you are not in good time with them, they could be a spoiler uh, to the peace process itself. So there is a complication coming there. You need money also, uh, you need a lot of money, you need a lot of financial support. Was, you know the situation in the country, you know the situation in the region, you know the situation globally due to COVID. So there are so many uh, hinders uh, that mm -hmm. been, uh, will be standing. Money was one of the, we'll, I will come to this point. Yeah. Yes. Money yeah. is very important because this yeah. is part of this agreement, most of it actually, most of it money. needs money. Yes. Otherwise people, if they don't find money, they will <laughs> go back to the forest. Yes. Okay, Hala. I want to ask you about to make a comparison between, but I myself, I, I, I had some experience, but you have mm -hmm. been roaming in Africa, mm -hmm. most of the countries. I myself, mm -hmm. wha wha when I was the chairman of SICAFA, uh, Sudan mm -hmm. Football Association, mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. 10 countries in Africa, including Rwanda, Burundi, most of the people now, we think most of the people around us in Africa mm. are in peace. Mm -hmm. The last was Rwanda. Mm -hmm. I, I have been in Rwanda in mm -hmm. 1990, 1999, after the civil war, mm -hmm. and the, 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 the incumbent president, uh, Kigami, mm -hmm. at that time was the vice president. Mm 
-hmm. And uh, we played match in Rikafa in Rwanda, mm -hmm. Kigali, mm -hmm. the match, the final match between Rwanda mm -hmm. and uh, I think Kenya. And Rwanda won the cup. And people, to all of the people inside the stadium, they mm -hmm. were rejoicing and celebrating the, the victory. So this Kigama, he came to me, he said, Mr. Chairman, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I'm very happy because now you have united my people. Mm -hmm. I was chairman of CICA for football. Mm -hmm. Since that time, now we all know that about Rwanda. Right. This peace agreement really held. It's still mm -hmm. going. Mm -hmm. And uh, most countries in Africa, mm -hmm. uh, also now conflicts in Africa, which used to be mm -hmm. commonplace in most parts mm -hmm. of Africa. Now mm -hmm. it's not. Uh, now peace is, is, is lost in, in the Middle East. Right. No peace in the Middle East. Right. Can you tell us why, uh, why this, wha what happened in Africa? Why now Africa right. is not having many problems of civil wars? Well, th that's an important question. And, and I think critical to peace, in my view, uh, as I said, it's, uh, it's a governance system. Yes. Uh, strong and coherent and respect uh, equal citizenship. And, and I think most of the African countries, they figured that out that um, if it's Rwanda or Uganda or, um, you know, um, Ethiopia, who's much bigger than us, you know, over 120 million people uh, and so on. Um, and, 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 and so it's, it's a definitely a combination of, in my view, of understanding that there is no peace without the privileged elites having the capacity to compromise with the rest of other disadvantaged populations. And um, to be able to accommodate and make sure that everyone is part of this process. And you see that happening significantly. And I think the, the latest country that we can look at and learn a lot from is the Ethiopians. And I think they are really doing great work despite the difficulties. You know, it's an extremely diverse country it, in terms of religion, in terms of cultural background. There is nations inside Ethiopia. But the capacity to accommodate, you know, and, and like, you know, there is a clear understanding that we need to be able to accommodate. We need to be able to share, you know, uh, uh, what we have. And we need to, uh, to be able to accept that things can be done in a different way. The other um, elements, in my view, that actually led to a lot of instabilities in countries like Rwanda is um, um, the leadership. Uh, um, <coughs> leadership is critical in yeah. achieving peace. Um, and leadership is not about only having an individual leader, but leadership, it's about the system of governors that's really trusted by the people because it responds to their needs. And I think this is where our failure is. Most of the time, um, I think uh, most of the time, Sudanese um, uh, elites and ruling structures, you know, they sort of, they were not willing to accommodate. And, and the last thing, that I think it helped a lot in peace and stability is to comply and reconcile with the international community and with the world and to accept that we are part of this world. And it's, uh, 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 there is few countries who are still struggling with that and they are still uh, living in a very dark realities. Um, in, 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 in this region. I mean, the, the insistence on, you know, uh, um, you know uh, on, on religious militancy, the insistence on excluding people based on their faith, um, the notions of discrimination and undermining of other people, the lack of respect for our own indigenous people and native people, and all those issues combined. You know, so, uh, uh, so peace, it's, in my view, it's a project for a nation state. And unless, um, um, Dr. Suleiman, you know, that is being in place here, Doctor, um, I'm, I'm worried that your fears, what you talked about, you know, um, um, that, that's, that's going to obstruct this. Yeah, thank okay. you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yes, I think, uh, 
Do you agree? Is, uh, analysis is uh, definitely true. And, but I think the people who sign in these agreements are all from, they are not from the elites. They are all coming from different factions of this country. So that's why I'm very hopeful in the sense that the people who are going to assist and support and work into the process of implementation are the same people who are signing this agreement, which covers the worries and the needs of the needy in this country. And I think if we, when you go through the documents, uh, personally, I, when I went through them, uh, my feeling is that who else, even those who are outside, who are not part of it, when they come and look at the issues that have been raised. By the way, uh, what happens, for example, I, we did arrange some workshops for the IDBs in Darfur, and we sent uh, refugees, IDBs from the camps, mm -hmm. women, uh, use the civil societies and the tribal leaders in the Darfur, a huge number, I think over 20, two, 220 representatives. They went to there and they were very, at the beginning of the workshop here, they voiced their concern about the, about the negotiation in Juba and that those people are not representing us and that they are not addressing our issues. And when they went there, they, in uh, open forum, they reflected their uh, issues and then the people showed them the issues discussed. They said, well, I think what you guys discuss is far, far above what we expect. So the, the thing is, uh, this, that's, 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 a, the, so that's the thing that makes me quite confident that upon, exec upon executing these agreements, I think it touches the root cause of the problem. What's left now is during the implementation to mend because the root cause sometimes is tarnished a little bit. Right. We need mending, we need advocacy, we need, uh, uh, and this is part of even the media here, they have to start a campaign of uh, advocacy of the agreement, explaining the details so that it can rally people right. are, uh, on it. And I think that will be the first task we are going to do, which uh, to use all the resources available in the media so that at least we can advocate the terms and conditions and uh, the issues uh, stipulated in this agreement. Once that is done, I'm sure that everybody will find himself in this agreement. But we need to do that. Okay. I think, I think uh, Dr. Zerwan, you need to say something about the role of South Sudan, Juba. Oh, okay. Yes, I think. Okay. Because we are only having about four minutes. Okay. This, uh, you okay. need to say something about uh, the role and okay. you know, to comment their efforts. You know, Juba, frankly speaking, is, is our, some people call it our sister, uh, our younger brother. Uh, anyway, during this starting process, uh, many people have been hoping to, uh, to, to, to have this negotiation to happen in their many countries, actually. But the choice was Juba, and for one reason. What between us and Juba, there are a lot of linkages. Uh, between us and Juba, we have problems. They have problems. Sure. Juba, yes, people were saying Juba has no money, and they, are, they, they cannot sustain this, they cannot sponsor this thing, and so on. But the thing is, the good part about it is that once it's a, it's not only peace for Sudan, it's peace for Juba too. Sure. Okay. And Sudan contributed substantially yeah. to yeah. the peace in Juba. Yeah. Now Juba is contributing substantially to the peace it's in Sudan. It's the same. Uh, in Sudan. Uh, this will definitely set a very solid ground for the two countries to have a better future, to work together, address their issues, resolve the small conflicts between them and then merge into Africa as one united body uh, with soft border or with whatever border you want to say, but still, Juba played a substantial role and we highly appreciate the effort that they have done with disregard of the resources they have, but Juba uh, has done a great job and our friend uh, Tut uh, Gulwak and Dr. Dewey and all the team, all the secretary, all, they have very been de uh, diligent. They have been working very hard in this process to make it happen. And, uh, okay, uh, Dr. Yeah. 
and develop chairman of the, the peace commission, Sudan important peace commission, yeah. and our friend uh, Sudan uh, Ali Al Karib. We will continue in another episode, but the time for this episode now is, okay. is, is almost finished. Uh, we will continue uh, next week. Okay. okay. Thank you very much, dear viewer, for being with us in the last 45 minutes. We hope we'll continue on the same issue with the same uh, guests next week. Till that time, hope to see you well.